Hey, hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped, and we're here continuing on with our series of episodes talking about the fantasy overview of each team. Today, we're talking about the Calgary Flames. All right, so I believe Calgary's lines will look something like this. Johnny Gaudreau, Sean Monaghan, Elias Lindholm, Andrew Majapane, Michael Backlund, and Matthew Kachuk. And then on that third line, we've got Lucic, Bennett, and Dubé. In a perfect world, those would not be Calgary's lines. Their third line is kind of just a checking line, pretty weak. Lucic doesn't really belong on a third line. He belongs more on a fourth line. So I think Calgary's third line could look something like this if their prospect, Jacob Pelletier, actually turns out to be pretty good. Their third line could be Dylan Dubé, Jacob Pelletier, and Josh Levo, who's actually a pretty talented guy as well if he can stay healthy. Their power play will be Matthew Kachuk, Sean Monaghan, Johnny Gaudreau, Mark Giordano, and Elias Lindholm. Their second unit won't play too often, but it should be Josh Levo, Michael Backlund, Andrew Mangiapane, Rasmus Anderson, and Noah Hannafin. All right, guys, so let's jump right into our do not draft list. And on this list, honestly, there's nobody too significant because I don't really hate anybody who's important in Calgary to draft. Now, first on this list is Milan Lucic. And this guy used to be a pretty, pretty good scorer. He used to get you 50 points a season guaranteed. And he's really dropped off over the last few seasons. And he hasn't really gotten much better. He got 20 points, which, I mean, you could do worse, but I mean... In a standard league, I would absolutely not draft him. The only place where he's borderline draftable was a bangers league because he does hit. He was in the top 25 in hits last season. He had 198 hits. So if hits are really, 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 really valuable in your league, you can draft him. But other than that, I'm staying away from Lucic. Next are Rasmus Anderson and Noah Hannafin. And these are guys that, you know, they're good defensemen. They're really, really solid guys. They're not overly offensive. They both got exactly five goals and 17 assists last year for 22 points. And you know, it's decent and they would have probably finished with around almost 30 points if they played a full season, but that's not that great for a defenseman. So I'll stay away from these guys, unless the exception is if Giordano goes down with an injury, then one of these two guys takes his spot on the top power play and becomes significantly more valuable. And last but not least on this list, guys, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but don't draft Derek Ryan. I have him projected to be a fourth liner this year. And, you know, he actually did pretty good as a fourth liner last year. He got 29 points. But even then, guys, 29 points, not that great in 68 games. So, you know, there's so many better options than drafting a fourth liner. All right, so into our draft list. Now, the rankings you see are not what you've seen in past videos. They are not from NHL's top 250 player rankings. They are actually from Yahoo, that's right. Yahoo finally opened up their hockey pool and have released their expert ranking. Now, Matthew Kachuk, you could see he's ranked 38 overall on Yahoo pools. And you know, that's not a terrible ranking for him, especially if you're in a league that includes hits. He's a forward that likes to hit a significant amount. So the only thing that might have you a little bit worried is his shooting percentage. He had a pretty high shooting percentage of 12.23%, which means he scores on that percent of his shots. And the league average is only 9.5, but Matthew Kachuk's career average is actually higher than that. His career average is 13%, so his numbers couldn't even go higher from here. It's also nice that he finally found a good line mate to go along with him in Backland in Manjapane towards the end of the season, and I think that that'll ultimately help him really increase his value even more. All right, so next on my draft list is Johnny Gaudreau. And Johnny Gaudreau had a down season last year. He only finished with 58 points. And by his standards, that was pretty disappointing. He was a guy that just missed hitting 100 points the season before. Yeah, yeah, it was a condensed season, but he only missed 12 games, right? So, you know, he's a guy who has a lot more potential than what he showed last year. And drafting him at 47 isn't the worst if you think he'll have a bounce back season, which I think he will. Now, last year his shooting percentage was 8.61, which is pretty low considering the league average is 9.5, and he's an elite player playing on an elite line. So that has bound to go up. Like he was just unlucky for the most part last year. That number has to go up, and his numbers absolutely should go up next year. 
diving right into his line mate last year, Elias Lindholm, and he had a pretty nice season, scoring 54 points. The thing that worries me a little bit about Elias Lindholm is that last year he had an absurdly high shooting percentage of 17.61. Now, I think that he's ranked a little bit high just because of that, right? Because there's no way he keeps that up. Like, that's bound to go down a little bit. He scored 29 goals last year. There's no way he does that again, in my opinion. I don't absolutely hate drafting Elias Lindholm in this range, though, just because I do expect Johnny Gaudreau to, you know, get a little bit more productive. Therefore, Elias Lindholm's numbers shouldn't drop too, too much. All right, so fourth on this list is Jacob Markstrom. And I really like that signing when Calgary signed him in the offseason. They finally got a reliable starting goaltender. Now on Yahoo's expert ranking, he's currently ranked 74th overall, which is, you know, not too, too bad. And he's the 13th overall goaltender. So that's pretty much where he belongs in the rankings. So if you want to draft Jacob Markstrom, you absolutely can. The only thing to keep in mind this year is there's going to be probably a condensed schedule and Riddick has proved that he's a pretty decent backup. So Riddick might get, you know, close to 30, 40% of the games if the schedule really is condensed and there's a lot of back-to-backs. Next on the draft list ranked at 113 is Mark Giordano. And, you know, he's a guy who has highs and lows, right? One year he'll look like a Norris contender and the next year he'll really slow down. So last year he looked pretty decent, right? He had 31 points in 60 games, which isn't too bad. And if you factor in that he was kind of knocked off that top power play towards the end of the season when they signed Eric Gustafson, you know, his numbers don't look too, too bad. Now with that production, he'll get 41 points in a full season, which is pretty good for a defenseman. And in that range of drafting, it's not too bad. Now, if you play in a league where block shots are taken into account, Giordano actually finished seventh overall in the entire league last year in block shots. So he gets a lot of value there as well. All right, so next on the list, and I actually really like him at this draft range, is Sean Monahan, currently ranked 127th overall on Yahoo's expert draft list. And he plays with Johnny Gaudreau and Elias Lindholm, who are ranked way higher. But the thing is, Monaghan should pretty much get almost all the points that those guys get, right? The issue there is that he's locked in at center. And, you know, it's not the most valuable position in the world. But if you've got a utility spot, or you didn't really draft any centers until this point in the draft, Monaghan can offer some pretty nice value. Again, his shooting percentage was a little bit high last year at 13.25%. But Johnny Goudreau should have a better season this year, so it should also you know, compensate for that in Monaghan's numbers. Next on the list is Michael Backlund. And, you know, he was always a guy who would get, you know, maybe 40, 45 points in the season and no more than that. So he was never, you know, that much of a fantasy option in the past. But now that Matthew Kachuk has just gotten so good and now that he's skating on Michael Backlund's line, Backlund's value has really shot up. And last year, he got 45 points in 70 games. So with an extra 12 games played, you know, he would have gotten over 50 points, which is pretty decent. Now, I'm definitely not telling you you have to go out and draft Michael Backlund. There are other options, maybe better options at his draft range. But what's nice about him is that he counts for both a center and a right winger, allows for a little bit of flexibility within your lineup. If you're in a deeper league where he's not drafted, he makes a fantastic streamer in weeks that Calgary has favorable matchups. And last but not least on my draft list is Andrew Mangiapane, who really broke out last year and also has dual eligibility. One thing I don't understand in Yahoo's rankings though is why he's ranked above Michael Backlund. Yeah, he looked promising towards the end of the year, but Backlund's a proven guy, right? Mangiapane at that range is a little bit more risky. Yeah, he's gonna have a good season. No, I don't think it's gonna be better than Michael Backlund. His role in the top six, though, is pretty safe because I don't see them moving anybody else there, especially with that chemistry that he developed last year with Baglin and Kachuk. All right, so the last section of the video is the keep an eye out for list. And these are guys that, depending on what happens in training camps or in preseason, might actually have a little bit of value. We have to keep an eye out for these. So first is Dylan Dubé, and he started to look really good in the playoffs last year. He actually had four goals and an assist for five points in 10 playoff games. 
playing on a third line. That was pretty good. I was pretty impressed. And that third line is Sam Bennett and Milan Lucic. They're not exactly studs he's playing with, right? So, you know, I would love to see him get a heightened role in that Calgary offense. Unfortunately, barring injuries, I don't think that will happen because that top six is pretty set in stone. But that's why I was showing you at the beginning of the video that I really hope that Jacob Peltier makes the team so that third line could be him, Peltier, and Levo. I think that's a much more talented third line than they currently have projected. Now, I really liked the Levo signing. I think he's a really talented guy. Obviously, he's no superstar, but he's got some skill. If this guy can stay healthy, I think it's a really good signing, and I think he has a really good spot on the third line for Calgary. So next on this list is Juso Balamaki. Poor kid. He had to sit out the entire season last year, did not play a single game due to an ACL injury, and those things are scary, especially when you're missing that much time. But he looks healthy right now. He's currently playing in Finland, and he's got himself 19 points in 19 games in their top league. So he's going to look to make a splash in that Calgary Flames training camp. You never know, right? Maybe he looks really good in training camp and preseason this year, and maybe Calgary decides to give him a chance on that top power play. If he impresses, it might be his job instead of Giordano. As unlikely as that is, it is a possibility. That's why he's on this list. So last on this list, guys, is someone I've talked about a little bit already, and that's Jacob Peltier. He was drafted in 2019, 25th overall in that first round by Calgary, and the kid's looking pretty good in the QMJHL. He's currently practicing with Team Canada, and should make the team for the World Juniors Tournament this month. If he impresses in that tournament, there's a decent chance the Flames add him to their roster after the tournament. The thing is the tournament ends on January 4th, so he may not open the season with the Flames if the NHL season does start January 1st or so like is projected. But for Flames fans, there's a lot to be excited for. Look out for this guy in the tournament. He might look really great. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Please leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments how I can improve these videos. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.